Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how I've made this animation. This was my final Games Workshop assignment at iAnimate Online School. Still under the mentorship of Jeremy Collins, Senior Animator and Art Director at Blizzard. If you want to know more about my iAnimate experience and assignment, check out my previous video. Let's get started. Searching for reference is an important stage of any animation and it was crucial for the takedown. I knew I wanted to do a Scythor takedown close to what Black Widow does in the Avengers. The first reference I've selected was this incredible move, but the quality was super low and it will be very hard to get proper hips, spine and arm motion to be studied. After reviewing tons of reference and certainly not being able to record it myself for obvious reason, I found this one from Mike Muller. He has tons of great stunts video for your references. Most of the video was good to me, but the final move. I was expecting the victim to get knocked out or worse on the impact. Not with this second twist supposed to break its neck. That really looks fake and too choreographed. As for the first assignment, the blocking stage was very detailed. And as before, I started working without caring about the timing. I switched from FK to IK whenever the black character was in contact with the other. I was planning on using different constraints from one character rig onto the other later on. No constraints were applied during the blocking stage on the two rigs. For the animation review, my mentor took a particular attention to watch it under every angle to make sure both characters were balanced. This is why I was providing play blast from as much useful angles as possible. For this animation, I've made my staging, the camera framing and animation pretty early on as it was quite following the reference shot so I had less of a guess what work to do compared to the previous animation. As for the combo animation, we have spent most of our time working the blocking stage as it is super important. The philosophy here is not to give any space to interpretation before jumping into spline. Each movement must be clearly defined during the blocking. When I'm in production for Noara, for example, I generally deal with overlapping motion like the hairs during polishing stage to work faster. But here, time spent to create the best animation possible wasn't a limitation. Also, one thing I have to mention here is that reworking or retiming your animation afterward is super painful as you have to work on two characters interacting one with the other. And offsetting one character animation to make it look more contrasted, snappier or more stylized can ruin the second character motion. I must say that the animation process was going pretty smoothly but I wasn't happy with the beginning of the animation because it lacks anticipation and everything was starting right away without guidance for the viewer. So I've tried to input more anticipation on the brown character and add some motion to her feet or I knew Luciano would have kicked me in the butt. One of the main issues here was that both character anticipation were straight, especially the black character having a move backward and then forward. I had the great chance and privilege to get some feedback from Daniel Zittel, former animation supervisor and currently animator at Riot Games. He told me that for martial art motion, I should favorize rotation motion. So I came up with this windmill move with the arm that would then drive into the guard of the brown Lisa. I'm so glad I had this feedback and this proof again that you should share your work as much as possible. You never know what can happen. Sure thing is that you'll never have feedback if you don't show your work. The polishing stage was pretty straightforward and my blocking was so detailed I didn't need to use any constraint on the characters. I was really surprised about that but all the contacting frame were working great and I just made a few minor adjustments. Let's have a more detailed look to the final animation. Regarding the starting pose, I always try to keep both characters balanced. 
I've given a special attention to the arm flow of the black character while keeping the main line of action easy to read. On the black character, the smear effect makes the nice arc of the arm way more obvious, but if we were tracking the head, you would see that we also have this nice arc that occur here. The other character has straighter arm to mark his anticipation, moving into a very straight punch where both arms are aligned. The back elbow is supporting the pose as explained in the previous video. The whole body pose is built toward this punch. On the other character we can see that one side has a smooth silhouette while the other side is more complex. The arms are pointing into the direction of the next move. I really wanted the black character to have a very smooth movement almost liquid-like. So I've built the motion of the arm in this sense, almost like a snake motion, making sure that the end direction and the finger posing was supporting this ID. I've tried to keep the top of the character as smooth and aligned as possible, while the bottom part of the animation was more complex. On this part, I've tried to support the motion of both characters by using an elliptic shape with both arms and then it disconnects as soon as the action is going forward and the brown character is getting pounded on the crowd. As explained in my previous video, everything is a bouncing ball and we can see it on the back of the brown character getting pulled and smashed on the ground as the bouncing ball would be. The camera shake on impact make it a bit harder to track, but you have the idea. I've paid quite a lot of attention to the movement of the leg of the dead character in putting as much overlap as possible on every single joint. The idea was to support the ragdoll effect without getting too cartoony. You can see that the knee is slightly bending on the side instead of bending forward and the ankle and the toes are just following, so it really brings this loose feeling to the animation. One important thing here too is that both legs are hitting the ground with a slight offset. You don't want everything to occur at the same time. Another thing that was kind of landing or finishing more or less at the same time was the pose of the other character head. So I've made sure that she finished her move with a one or two frame offset. This is the kind of thing you should really think about whenever you are doing any kind of animation, where, for example, your character is jumping and both feet hit the ground at the same time. If you can avoid it, unless it is something done on purpose, because it can bring strength to your animation, like the classic superhero three point of contact landing, but if this is not the case, you should avoid that. You should avoid twinning in your animation, making both feet arriving at the same time, both hands arriving at the same time, both eyes in a blink opening exactly at the same time. The final polishing stage is to bring all the secondary overlapping motion, like the very subtle motion in the feet of the black character or the motion of the hairs and stuff like that. Let's check the affixes of this shot, but before, a little word from our sponsor. This tutorial is sponsored by myself. If you want to learn all my rigging technique, or if you want to create stylized character from scratch, you will find all you need on my Gumroad page. Use the code P2Design and get 10% on whatever product you want. I've used the same environment as in the previous video. You will find the link in the description below. To create the smear effect, I've modeled a curve following the shape of the hand movement. I'm then animating the bevel start and bevel hand values of this curve. This makes the rebound following the curve, and the length of the rebound is the length of the smear. Then I've applied a material set to alpha blend. This is a simple radial gradient or quadratic sphere that is contrasted and mixed with a noise texture. This noise texture will drive two color ramp, one that is set to constant interpolation to set the color, and one 
is a simple grayscale gradient that will drive the transparency of the effect. I have used exactly the same node setup to create the orangey smear of the other character, just tweaking the transparency level and the colors of the smear. The impact effect is just a bunch of planes that I've combined together. I created the shape key just to animate a bit their position. And I didn't want those rays to get shot, but mostly a big expansion of them, making them bigger and then make the shape dissolve by getting thinner. So I've just animated the Y scale of those gradient texture UVs. So it's basically exactly the same material as for the smear, but I've just cranked up the emission strength of it. To create the crack on the ground, I've mixed a radial gradient with a simple crack texture I found on the internet. I'm animating the gradient to make the crack propagate on the ground and it's also masking a simple emission shader with its emission strength animated too. To make this effect even easier to read from the camera angle, I've also used some geometry. These are simple modeled broken tiles that I've animated just popping up. They have exactly the same material as the ground tiles. To rapidly create this kind of model, I add in the background the picture of the crack. So here I'm just showing you rapidly how I do this. Using the knife tool on a simple plane, I will just cut in the shape of the different tiles. Then I will press I to use the Insight Face tool and I will select individual. I can then reverse my selection and get rid of the vertices so that I have separated ties. I will use another inside face and then I will move the newly created face up. Then I just have to slightly rotate the different broken tile to make it more appealing and more interesting. Then, as usual, I sent the animation to my friend and colleague Gabriel Dalmasso and he did the sound design. <laughs> This is the end of this video, hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!